everybody and welcome back to our YouTube channel. As always, we are Arna and Carlos and today we bring you some of our favorite pieces out of our closet and into your homes. Yes, we do. And last time we talked about a mag Japanese magazine Yeah. in the second out of the closet. I'm sure most people can relate with this. You're going to show something, you're looking for the thing that you need. You can't find it anywhere, there's no time, so you have to record the video without showing that thing that you want it to show. Then, some time passes, yeah, you're going to do a new video, uh, and voila, there it is, the thing you were looking for that you couldn't find. You Finally, look for something different, then yes. you find it. And this house eats stuff. Yeah, an so. old house, it's 117 years old, and it eats everything, so <laughs> things but, tend to disappear. But we talked about this jacket. Yeah. And we made one for hand-knit inspired of this one, and we found the magazine. So this is the Kaito Dama. Yep. Where we are the cover boys. The cover boys. And this is the model. So this is for hand-knit. And if you can't read Japanese, the patterns are quite easy to follow because... Yeah, they're pretty good. They're all charged. And they even like have this. a pictogram showing all the other stuff. So it's, 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 it's doable. Get your Kaito Dama and start knitting your patterns patchwork sweater and I think just you know in case you're new in case you've never been to this uh, uh, YouTube channel before or in case you didn't see the other episode I think we're going to try linking this uh, latest episode with the episode that we did before so there should be a link somewhere <laughs> yeah. on, on one of the sides somewhere. of the screen that you can click on and then you can go to that episode just to make and people see. more confused exactly uh, and if you want to do this one and if you're a good knitter you can just make a swatch and you check your tension and then you yeah. can just add more on the sides or take off and also on the length so this way you can make your own sweater yep. from this okay but let's move on as always we bring our <laughs> our jacket out this is uh, <laughs> i think it's a it's a favorite uh, it has so many meaningful pieces from uh, different uh, sweaters that we couldn't keep uh, and instead of keeping bad sweaters we made one piece out of it we talk about this one in the first uh, archive video which and we're also going to be one. linking and in the second one and we brought it out because we have a third video we should promise this is the last time yeah we bring that out so the piece Maybe. that we want to show you from for the third <laughs> for uh, the third video this video and for the sweater we're going to talk about is this one here this is what they call in norway we call this the icelandic sweater and in iceland they say no this is not the Icelandic sweater, but it's called Eastlander in Norway, and this is something normally farmers use these in the barns. And I remember also if you were like this Greenpeace person, or mm. you say on save the oceans, save things, the whales, you wear this one. Yeah, and it's a very iconic Norwegian sweater. Anybody from Norway that sees this will associate this with one thing: workwear. So it's considered, uh, it's not considered a very high standing uh, pattern. This is a workwear sweater thing. You wear it in the barn, you wear it as a fisherman and so on. And we took this uh, workwear sweater a few years ago. This must have been also in 2007, t uh, sorry, 2007. And we designed our own sweater based on that. It's this one here. Um, I'm gonna put it on the dummy. Mm -hmm. this, and this this piece is machine made and this sweater was I guess this was bought in the grocery store where I grew up yeah you could buy those usually in the supermarket the in grocery Norway. stores had those in the old days when I was old and I'm ancient ancient so, so, <laughs> so this is our version of the Icelandic Icelandic sweater yeah it's a little bit dirty here, I see. Uh, we need to get it cleaned. We need to clean it. But uh, the reason why it's a little bit dirty is because I wear it. I've I wore it a lot in the past. And you I were love it. Spilling coffee or something. I think I did. Yeah. yeah. It's my favorite sweater ever made, ever designed by us. I love this sweater so much. Um, it's different from the uh, workwear sweater. We've taken the idea of the pattern in squares. Uh, and then we've played with structure. So we've yeah. turned some stitches around, uh, creating an effect that is uh, structured. There's a relief here. Yeah, this is just knit, but on this we played with knit and pearl. That's why you get the white stripes in the middle of the blue. So it's and like a Space Invader. Yeah, it's kind of like a pickup from the Space Invader, <laughs> but this is a little... It's not any, it's not a Pac-Man, it's not Bart Simpson, it's nothing like that. It's just a little icon or a little cartoon of a little boy with two eyes, but, uh, or, or a little pixelated uh, animated computer game uh, 
figure, but it's not necessarily one that exists because this came by itself when we were uh, when we were playing around with texture. And this is made on a hand knit machine, in hand loom, hand loom machine, loom machine yes. in Peru, and it's alpaca merino. And we yeah. also made one with this pattern for hand knit, which we couldn't find now, so we probably bring this out yeah. again later. And this is <laughs> this is what I would like to call our version of the Icelandic sweater that is not an Icelandic sweater, as we've already told you. And I, I like to think of it as a fisherman's sweater. This is something that a fisherman you know, could wear if they were up in the north of Norway, in Lofoten, fishing for cod uh, on their boats. Uh, I'd definitely wear this if I were a fisherman, for sure. Yes. Next okay. one. Let's go for the next one. Uh, and actually, I'm going to put this on the dummy. This one I used this one in a video once. And also, sometimes I use it. Arne, this was in the archive, the first episode of the archives. Oh, it was. I don't yeah, remember. we showed this in the first episode oh, of I remember. the Arne and Carlos <laughs> archives. <laughs> so. And uh, the reason why we're bringing it back is because we want to show you how we can work with an idea, and then how we can take that idea and make it our own and create a design based off that. So this is the one we bought in Paris in a thrift store. Uh, and voila. And voila. <laughs> I'm wearing uh, the Arne and Carlos version, of which is basically, one. yeah, which is basically a raglan sweater. And then it has the pattern going down uh, on the front. And there's nothing on the back, as you can see. Uh, nothing on the back there. And what we've done is we've kind of recreated another pattern. This is something that we've designed ourselves. And we put in the space reindeer. Yeah, there's a little because reindeer. Because we were very into the space invader stuff at that time. So we made space reindeers. Yeah. This one is knitted in alpaca with merino. And it's a very, it's a heavyweight sweater. It's uh, high, you know, the gauge is, is very low. It's like a three gauge in the... Uh, technical terms oh, I don't know and the problem with alpaca is that it pills and even mixing it with merino will make it pill and I'm sure that you can see because the cameras are so good I'm sure that you can see that the sweater is pilled a lot maybe and this I is, used it because I peel you peel more than me but I, I would peel, peel too <laughs> and this is the result if you you know you can't get everything you can't get the perfect yarn that doesn't pill so, uh, you know, if you want a soft yarn, like a cashmere or an alpaca, you have to sacrifice something and it will pill, as you can see. Even if it's very expensive alpaca, it will pill. Don't think that just because you pay lots and lots of money for alpaca, it won't pill, because it will. Shall we move so on? Let's put something that doesn't peel on the dummy. Let's this, do that. This one, this doesn't peel. This is an old jacket we found in a thrift store in Norway. Thrift store. Thrift. Thrift. Butik. Secondhand store. Secondhand store. This is very nice. We use this a lot in the winter, in the garden, in the summer. In the garden in the summer and in the winter. Yeah, it's really it's lovely. Good. It's knitted with very high quality Norwegian wool, the best there is. It's probably from the 60s uh, or maybe the 70s uh, or could even be from the 80s. Uh, 50s, at least older than 80s. I don't know. No, but I mean, it's, it's no older than 1980 for sure. Uh, but the, the yarn quality is so high that this one will not pill ever. But again, I mean, I wish you could feel this because it is uh, quite, it's got a, a rough texture. It's not itchy at all, but you know, when you, when you put it in your hands, you do feel the wool, if you know what I mean. And this has a really nice color combination with it. And it's very nicely knitted. Beautifully knitted. It's and I think that well, when we saw it in the thrift store, what caught our attention, number one, the colors, and number two, the quality of this wool. Because we know it's old and it's incredible how something can last so long. But this is what happens when you buy very good quality, 100% wool, which is a little bit coarser and does itch, but doesn't pill. And I have to say, I've seen uh, there's this guy, this Italian guy, who we follow on Instagram. He saw this sweater, you were wearing yeah, it, I see, yeah. and he's knitting it now. I mean, he's knitting it from a picture, which is really, really clever. So, so he's good. He's really good. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the buttons. There are like one, two, three, 
five different buttons. Yeah, I think we need That's to do cool. a little repairing here on this yeah. buttonhole. But otherwise, it's in perfect condition. Next one. Two more. No, three more. Four more. Let's do this one. This is handmade. This is something we found in a secondhand store in Norway, in Oslo. I don't know how old is it. this is. I don't know. But it's nice. I like the color combination. This reminds me about Pippi Longstocking. That's a Christmas yeah. episode of Chris, uh, Pippi Longstocking. It's filmed in Norway, in mm -hmm. Rörus. And her friends, Annika and, and Tommy. Tommy, they're they wearing have. these Norwegian yeah. sweaters. And it's kind of in the yeah. spirit. So it. this is the Pippi Longstrump sweater. Uh, we, have <laughs> to really, we have to repair the, the, the color. Yeah. But it's actually keeping very well, uh, not peeling very much either. Uh, and I still use this sometimes. Of course, it's you way are. too short, but I just pulled my sleeves off. The back. Beautiful pattern. I love this pattern. And here. nicely knitted. Very well knitted. This is a nice sweater. Okay, let's go to one of our more recent finds. Uh, yeah, and there's a link to this one in Kaito Dama. This is from a second-hand store in Tokyo. To Tokyo. We got this one in Tokyo. It looks very Norwegian, but I think it's not. It's, it's from, not. It's wool. It's wool ridge. Ridge. So it's American. It's, it's an American, American sweater. But this is from, we found it in Tokyo. We did, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's <laughs> made in America, so obviously so there, there are. So there are more of these in America. And this is the way you, if you look at the eight Lee roses where they change color, that's the inspiration for some pieces we also did, which is also in this magazine. In the Kaito Dama, you see the, the, the fingerless mittens. And the cowl. And cowl. the cowl. We made these eight Lee rose pattern where you, there are like two or three colors in each eight Lee rose. Mm. So it's inspired from this one. Yeah. Love the colors, <laughs> love the way it's composed, love the balance. It's just a really good sweater. What can we say? There's nothing more to say. It's good. And this we use. I'm curious about this one. This I, is something I made when I was a boy or a kid. I had that suspicion. Yeah. And I made this while I was up in the mountains, milking the cows, watching the, watching the animals in the summer. And I didn't have a lot of white. So if you look at the rib, it's tiny. It's tiny. It goes up. But now, how old were you? I don't remember. You must have been really skinny at that time. I because was very skinny at that time. It's almost tight on this uh, female dummy. And I know what you're thinking. It's machine made, but no, it's not. I'm so good. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfectly knitted. There's nothing, nothing wrong with the knitting. Except the, the rib is horrible. But yeah. it's all made of leftover yarn. So this is what I had. So Arne's leftover yarn sweater made with what he, what he had on a summer on top of the mountain while you were milking the cows, yes. I guess. Uh, okay, so my question to you, was this before or after you, had, you got the milking machine in your farm? This was before the milking machine. Before the milking machine. So that means that... No, I sorry, this is after. Oh, okay. This is, this is after the milking machine, because when, the, when I didn't have the milking machine, I had to milk the cow by hand. Oh, so you didn't but have But then time. I got the milking machine, and then I could knit while the machine was doing the job. Yeah, I like it. I think it's nice. I use this a lot. I even have pictures from school when mm -hmm. I went to school. You know this uh, legitimation, was that? Or your ID. My ID, where I have this one. So how old were you? I don't know, 80s something. 80s, so in your, eight, in your 20s? 20s, maybe. Early 20s. Yeah. Yeah. Not okay. that young. Okay. One more to go. One more, and which one? Bengt. Bengt. It's this is Bengt. Yeah, we have a sweater that has a name. Its name is Bengt. And this is, we also have the pattern. It's that's why we know it's called Bengt. And Bengt is a male uh, Scandinavian name. It's a, it's a name in Denmark, it's a name in Norway, it's a name in Sweden. Yeah, and this was my great-grandfather's jacket, and I remember he was using it. And you see, it, they were very short at that time. It's probably from the 40s or 50s, I don't, I don't know. And it's been, washing, been washed in the machine, so you see the yarn has felted felt a little bit. So there's a strange, uh, what do you call this? 
strange pattern on it, yeah. like a relief. But it's very nice. And sometimes I use this, but it's too short on the sleeve. Uh, but we like the short body length. The mm. length is, is really cool. Let's turn it around. It's almost feminine. But it's a male sweater. It's just the way they were made in the, in the 40s. Uh, lovely pattern. I love this uh, pattern going down that way. Uh, but don't it's wash really it too nice. Hard. And then you can see it's it clearer on the sleeve uh, yeah. compared. Very well knitted. It probably done by your great grandmother or your probably my grandmother or my great grandmother. It must be one of those. Yeah. So you can see that because they were the best knitters in Norway at the time. <laughs> no. There's a lot of good knitters in Norway. Yeah. But so that's the last one. So. As I said, this is my this is my favorite sweater. I love this sweater to death, and uh, I just can't believe I've left it with coffee stains. So, I have a big cleaning job to do. I'm gonna make sure that it is spotless, and I'm gonna pack it in uh, and keep it nicely tucked in our archives where it will be safe. But this is definitely my favorite sweater. Arne, which is your this favorite? This one. This one. And this one. Okay. This is my favorite. Now what we'd like to hear from you is <laughs> which is your favorite sweater? Let us know. Put it in the comments. You've got three uh, videos now. We've done the archives number one, number two, and number three. Go through all three of the archives and please let us know on the comments field which is your favorite. Yeah, and these two probably have a name if you have the original pattern. It would be cool to know. What's the name? Oh yeah, yeah, that's because true. If you know. if you're from Norway or and you know the name of these patterns, we'd love to know that because we, we try know. to keep uh, as much information of each piece as possible in the archives together with the knitwear. So thank you so much for watching. Keep those comments uh, coming in. Hit the subscribe button, please, and we'll be back with fun tutorials and more videos in the weeks to come. So see you around. Bye.